Welcome to another Kings of War 3rd Edition Battle Report. Salamanders vs. Abyssals. 2300 points. The scenario was pillage. Since this is the first game of our new campaign, I actually changed armies from goblins. Craig has also changed his army over to Salamanders. Uh, we had a great time with our Northern Alliance versus Goblin campaign, but time to move on. I asked my friend Sean, I said, uh, what should I play? He just said Abyssals, and I really didn't think anything about it. But I have quite a few old Games Workshop models that uh, could be used for the Abyssal Army. And I've bought some more models, but right now I'm just going to use the models that I actually own and that I have painted. So. I'm going to be adding to the army and giving myself more flexibility as the weeks go on. But right now, this is what I have to play with, and I, I really like the list. I mean, it's not like I'm compromising anything to have this army list. So I have two regiments of Abyssal Guard, both with two hand weapons, and one with a Brew of Strength, one with Hans, and the other, and both with Sacrificial Imps. Two regiments of Abyssal Ghouls, with the Blade of Slashing and the Mace of Crushing. Two hordes of Moloch, both with the sacrificial imps. One of them has the blood of the old king, and the other one has the Elohi. Two imp regiments, two Cronius, Baal, a gargoyle troop, an abyssal warlock with the conjurer staff and bane chant, an abyssal champion with the wings, and lightning bolt five. So this is the first time of using my abyssal army, and I've kind of thought about how to set it up. Normally I want to uh, kind of set everything centrally and use the speed of my flying guys to uh, help block on either end. So this time I put the, uh, the closest to you, my, my unit of gargoyles and then both units of abyssal guard, each with a swarm of imps in front of them. Then the first unit of Moloch's with nothing in front of them. The other unit of Moloch's has two units of abyssal ghouls in front of it. Then both Cronius's. Um, the mage and the manifestation of Baal are all on the right flank. So I was really trying to concentrate some stuff over there because he had placed two of his hordes of Sauruses over there, not Sauruses, whatever they're called. Um, he had placed two hordes over there and I was hoping to uh, use those fast flyers and stuff to menace them. Alright, so down here on this end he had two units of gecko hunters and he also had a horde of geckos, warriors, uh, with a unit of salamander primes behind him. I think he actually repeated that. No, he didn't. He had another salamander prime unit that's just in the open. In, uh, then another salamander prime horde that's kind of going to the left side of the little token in the middle. Then two more units of gecko warriors and then just another unit of the uh, uh, gecko hunters down there. His characters are all kind of split up and down the line. And then his scorch wings are located centrally, just in case I hopped over the line to uh, to uh, cause some mayhem. All right, this is a view of the lizard men, turn one. Everything on the right side pretty much moved up straight. I don't know what the hell he was doing in the middle there. He turned that unit of uh, Sars Prime, I mean Salamander Prime, whatever the hell primes they are, uh, totally to the left. I'm guessing he's just trying to ambush me coming around the. Uh, uh, piece of impassable terrain right in the middle. I just got to say I really don't like playing with a piece of impassable terrain right in the middle. It just seems like it's a battle on both sides and you really can't come up with a coherent plan. But you know you play with what you got as far as terrain so it's no big deal. You can see the his movement now and, and the turn right in the middle and again that's why I don't really like playing with impassable terrain right in the middle of the table. It just it just pigeonholes the battle into two separate little battles. So in my turn, I just shuffled forward a little bit, uh, fired some lightning bolts and stuff, and really, I think I may have done one or two wounds that the rolling was really subpar. I did move the um, kind of counter of what he do, was doing with his um, Salamander Primes. I went ahead and moved one unit of Molex toward the left side of the table. The um, All my heroes, I kind of swung the... Um, Swung Bale out to one side to get a better angle on his line to to maybe force the way he changed the way he moved, and that was it for my first turn. So over on the left side of the table, one of his gecko hordes went ahead and charged into my imps, and you could see the 
uh, what I have for Abyssal Guard, our old uh, play bears of Nurgle, old metal ones, and then my imps are actually Nurglings. So it was nice having those in the box because they, they do actually just move straight over to this game. It looks like he easily knocked out my my um, imps, and I was going to have to do something. You know, in retro, I think in this game I actually moved up the gargoyles to um, prevent a flank charge from those uh, geckos. But really, the geckos don't really cause so much harm that you have to just fixate on on them charging in the flank. It's still just so many dice; it just seems stupid to ignore them, though. All right, this is kind of the start of mistakes in this game. His um, one of his gecko hordes charged into my rightmost unit of abyssal ghouls and didn't cause very much damage. But now I'm kind of jammed in behind. The the unit in the foreground is uh, a bunch of old GW chaos ogres, which are now my Molochs. And I have I'm sorry I haven't finished basing them yet, but I haven't really came up with a basing scheme that I that I really enjoy. And so. Uh, for right now, they're just kind of black and some patching some holes that I put in them. So, sorry guys. Okay, over here, some more signs of my stupidity. I don't know why I didn't charge in uh, with the gargoyles into that horde of geckos. I mean, I was going to get charged anyway. But what I did do was charge my um, one of my units of imps into the flank of his geckos and then the abyssal guard into the front. I think I got him up to 12, but I didn't roll enough to destroy that unit this turn. And over on this flank, the uh, stupidity continues. I decided to charge both Cronius's and the uh, and Bale plus one of my Abyssal champions into the flank, the Abyssal champion into the flank, and all the others in the front. I thought maybe I could bust them in one turn and quickly end this game, but that was a huge mistake. I mean, I really, there was no reason to do it. I could charge further than he could. What I should have done was move Acronius into the flank of that uh, gecko horde that's in front of me and destroyed them. And then I would have had the whole, his whole army right in front of me with a flank on it. But uh, just a moron move. I don't know what I was thinking. So I did manage to do 12 wounds to him. And probably in retrospect, that was going to be about average. But uh, I guess maybe I wasn't thinking about how much damage I could cause. I probably needed to get up to around 18, so six more wounds. So this whole charge was kind of in vain. Um, so now I'm in trouble because I'm stuck. All right, this is something that happened, and I've never really been sure how to deal with it, but I think we did it correctly. He went ahead and countercharged uh, Bale uh, to put him out of his misery because of his stupidity. Um, so my... Abyssal Champion is now because of the slide over to center on Bale. He is actually sitting there exposed uh, in the open, just essentially just like a disengage in a charge in the old days. So um, I think we did that right. I mean, according to my uh, questions on the Fanatics, we did it right. So it just almost counts as a super disengage. So, all right, so now Bale has died. Um, I still have the two Cronius guys in the front of that unit. Now he's starting to get a flank on me with the uh, gecko hunters and I think they're both actually gecko hunters and I think that's a Lachilodon at the bottom you can see his two ASBs sitting there uh, behind his uh, troops giving them the ya 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 okay on this end he went ahead and charged into my gargoyles I don't think he killed him I think he just did three wounds to him uh, here he counter charged into the unit that was in his flank and I actually don't even remember if this is possible because I am engaged to his flank and his front. Uh, we're just going to assume it did work because he did have enough room to do it and uh, uh, caused a lot of damage to that poor little swarm. So here I've obviously I've managed to destroy the uh, gecko horde and now turning to face the um, salamander prime unit. He moved his Lachilodon in front to keep me from charging in with my Mollocks. Uh, so I was going to have to figure out a different way to do this. And but I mean I'm still in a good position here because I still my uh, imps had survived and now they were acting as, as a as a nice chaff for me. So you can see here that the two Cronius went ahead and destroyed that unit of Salamander Primes. His scorch wings engaged my um, abyssal champion and I think I survived quite a bit of, a bit of time and maybe even survived the whole game. 
So um, it was nice. He got a little, he got just enough movement for him to land in that little spot there. And now essentially he's chaffed even more. Uh, I looked here on this and I look after the fact that I'm almost should have instead of when I was being countercharged, I should have just shuffled that left unit of um, since they weren't engaged, it should have shuffled that left unit of abyssal ghouls uh, just a little bit, and then the next turn I could have flight charged them. But the real stupidity was I should have flight charged them with one of the Cronias uh, in an earlier turn, and this whole part of the battle would have been mine easily, I think, because he was so jammed up behind those behind the terrain and behind his other units. Okay, over here on this side, he continued to charge into the gargoyles. The um, both the abyssal guard units moved up and ready to charge into the uh, salamander prime unit on the next turn. Uh, he had charged uh, into my uh, chaff unit, my little imps, and then he moved the lachilodon over so that he could um, chaff up my mollocks because I mean those mollocks will put paid on pretty much any unit they hit into, especially that these were kind of souped up with different magic items. So, um, looking like a good fight over here on this left flank right now. So here, my a very expensive unit of Molox is still trapped behind those two stupid units of ghouls. The one on the right is Waver, which doesn't matter since I have Fury. Um, over, his Scorch Wings are still engaged with my um, Abyssal Champion. He went ahead and charged one of the two Cronius, and the other Cronius got charged in the flank by these uh, um, Gecko Hunters. So in this turn, his uh, Gecko Gecko Warriors uh, went ahead and killed the rightmost of my Abyssal Ghouls, and that's going to actually help me out a lot. The fact that those guys died because now I can do a combined charge to get rid of them. Uh, his Scorch Wings are sitting there still trading blows with my Abyssal Champion. And Abyssal Champions are fairly tough dudes. Uh, his Salamander Primes, I believe, went ahead and destroyed the Cronius that they charged. And the Abyssal Hunters and the Lachilodon did a few points of damage to the other Cronius. So, pretty tough fight over here, too. So over here, I lost two Chaffiness this turn. My Gargoyles died, and he turned to face the flank of my... Uh, upper abyssals and the uh, a chaff in front of the salamander primes also died this turn and uh, so now I'm open for a, a charge from my, to, into his salamander primes with both units of abyssal guards okay so the um, abyssal guard do 11 wounds to the horde of salamander primes and the Molochs easily destroy the lachilodon and they're just waiting in line to uh, see whoever which units, my units die first. Uh, they'll be able to go in and uh, try to finish them off. But as you can see, my left flank is hanging wide open to that unit of geckos. So on this flank, the Moloch's and the Abyssal Ghouls went ahead and destroyed that unit of uh, geckos, which had held me up the whole game. It was my own fault. I shouldn't have ever let that happen as long as it did. The um, Cronius had turned around and killed the Lachilodon, and then uh, since he won the melee, he just reformed to face toward the Salamander Primes. Uh, the Abyssal Sorcerer went ahead and charged the rear, because, I mean, they have quite a bit of swings, uh, but I was hindered since I charged out of the woods, and should have been thinking about that a little sooner in the game than uh, try to get outside so that that could actually be an impactful charge. Here we had kind of a rules conundrum. And I'm just going to turn it into a teaching point because I was completely wrong. Uh, in this case, his uh, gecko hunters went ahead and charged, countercharged into the flank of the Cronius. And uh, my conjecture was that since he never moved, moved, that my sorcerer was immune to being shot. And in fact, that was incorrect because as soon as he did that, I was unengaged and therefore it was a fair shot. Now, in the end, it didn't matter because he. Uh, missed all of his shots or did or failed to wound but I was totally wrong about this and I apologize to Craig because I was kind of getting upset about it but common sense wise says that I was still engaged but the rules uh, really probably don't follow that so over on this flank the uh, the uh, charge of the gecko warriors went ahead and destroyed my left unit of abyssal guard but now that let me uh, have the ability to um, charge in against the uh, Salamander Primes with the Mollocks on the next turn. He had done eight wounds to the 
abyssal guard but they're fairly resilient and plus they have regeneration so I'm sure those eight wounds won't hang around for very long over here the uh, scorch wings had finally destroyed my abyssal champion now they were just going to act as chaff so that the uh, uh, Moloch's and the abyssal ghouls can't charge them uh, my the other of my Cronius had died and now they were closing in to kill the other one but I mean it was already uh, being hit in the flank and everything from that side so uh, got myself in a pickle here just really couldn't do much movement because I screwed up so early in the game so you can see here the uh, Moloch's go into the scorch wings the abyssal ghouls go into the flank of the salamander primes I know they're not going to do any damage the uh, Cronius just went ahead and turned to uh, to face the um, unit of abyssal hunters and the mage disengaged and went to, to, to contest that other objective but he only had a unit strength of one and he had that little unit of salamander I mean I'm sorry gecko hunters over there to contest it so over here the abyssal guard and the Moloch's easily destroyed that unit of salamander primes and you can see that with the regeneration rolls my abyssal guard was down to just one wound after starting out at I think six or so um, so they're going to, to destroy that unit then the abyssal guard is going to turn to face the uh, gecko warriors and try to defend themselves there I did not get a big enough overrun to get up to contest the objective so uh, that was unfortunate so over here the Moloch's easily destroyed the Scorch Wings and this is the final position of the battle I'd actually taken this two-point objective with the unit strength from the Moloch's the Abyssal uh, Ghouls and the Cronius uh, if there had been a turn seven I think he would have been in serious trouble right here but uh, as it was there was not a turn seven and just to the right even though you can't see it the uh, Abyssal Hunters have secured the other objective on that flank so you can see here that the Abyssal Hunters have the other objective I don't have enough unit strength to contest it I don't think uh, if I would have turned the Cronius and moved over there I would at least tied it and I don't remember if I needed to have him there or not uh, to uh, keep that one but I wanted to have the two-point objective for sure so we're on this flank you can see where the Moloch's had overran but did not get close enough to the objective to contest it so his uh, gecko warrior horde is within range to, to take that objective and then the uh, other gecko hunter ward is over there so that gives him three uh, points there the one on the right flank to my two points and so uh, great win for the salamanders this game was just a game for me of bad moves the uh, my army list was very capable of dealing with this scenario and I really felt, felt good about it the whole time where I made the mistake was on this right flank over here was charging uh, all my guys into that uh, salamander prime unit and not breaking it and letting it cost me bail and bail is an important piece in the end game he would have been an amazing piece but I just did I was stupid and made that made that charge now on this flank it really didn't even with that it didn't hurt me because I got the two-point objective but because I was so jammed up I couldn't get to the other objective and even though I had plenty of troops to do so so again that was a, a dumb mistake but actually the even though the left flank was easily mined the problem over there was I killed all the, the units but I couldn't get to the two objectives so uh, I lost the game basically just because Craig played this scenario and Randy was just playing to kill stuff so uh, my bad I mean Craig just played an outstanding game and, and at the end of it I looked up and said well you know I've probably got this one and then I realized that hell I don't have any objectives but, but one so that was the end of the game and uh, like I say some boneheaded moves but those boneheaded moves really didn't I mean I've lost some troops but the troops didn't count in this game it was the objectives entirely so uh, I think maybe if I would have put one of the uh, Cronius over on the other side uh, to support those units and then maybe um, uh, went ahead and used the Cronius that was in this game to charge into the flank of the gecko warriors and got them out of the way that would have freed up two regiments of abyssal guards I mean abyssal ghouls and a horde of Moloch's and a horde of Moloch's you know even as good as those salamander primes are a horde of Moloch's will eat them up pretty quick uh, or it might be a mutual annihilation but either way there's there's a lot of a lot of fighting power there uh, in that unit so 
Uh, yeah, because a bunch of mistakes. I uh, think I'm going to just play the same army again. I see no reason to change any of it. I mean, there was nothing that I thought when I was done with it that was wrong. It was, I mean, it was my first tabletop game with Abyssals, and that probably had a little bit to do with it. But really no excuse. I mean, just the stuff that I did in this game was just boneheaded and uh, risky.